Hey, I want you guys to welcome to my video. You know, like I've been telling you, I'm going to be pivoting to doing some other things out here on YouTube. And part of the series that I'm doing, that I've done before, that I haven't been uploading on a consistent basis, is called Beyond the Wall. Now, Beyond the Wall is about, you know, my life before, during, and after incarceration. I'm taking you guys through the journey about, you know, Really, my whole life, I'm 46 years old right now, and just the ups and downs that I've gone through and how I'm striving to pivot now to live a better life. But not just for myself, but for my community. You know, being where I've been during the time that I've done, you know, I got a firsthand experience and knowledge of how miserable it is. I mean, there's no other word to describe it. It's miserable sitting in a cell for 20-something years, you know, surrounded by a wall and gun towers, dealing with the violence and all the politics that goes on within the prison system. You know, a lot of people that gets thrown into the system, you know, they lose themselves because they have to adapt to their environment. And, you know, maybe... They weren't a violent person before they came in. They did some crimes or whatever that landed them there. But being in an environment full of monster, I always say that for you to survive, you have to become a monster yourself. And there's things that I've done in there that I'm not proud of. And there's things that I've done in there that was necessary, necessary to ensure my safety and my well-being. But everything you do in life, puts a scar on your body, whether it's a physical scar or a mental scar. You know, I've got holes from being stabbed. I've got a scar on the back of my head from getting hit in the hammer. I've been jumped. I've been in riots. I mean, how it affects you psychologically, how it affects you mentally, but not only that, how it affects your family and stuff out here. Since I've been home, I've been fortunate enough to make some pretty good connection with some real dudes. And part in one of the groups that I've been associating myself with, you know, just to be clear, I'm not on their board. I don't have anything to do with their program or anything. I've known some of these dudes when we were younger, before I went into prison, and coming home, seeing what they're doing with their life. It's, an inspiration. it's been an inspiration to me, you know? And I just want to be a part of it somehow, some way, and I'm grateful that they extended the inv invitation to me to let me be a part of it, be a part of what they're doing. And these dudes are really putting themselves in the community. You know, I was out in Denver for Thanksgiving, you know, visiting my in-laws, but while I was out there, they were over here, you know, doing a food food run. They, rate, you know, they put in a, 100 turkeys, 100 meals together to feed families in need. But they do this all the time. We had a function in the summertime that whatever was left over with the food that, did, that didn't sell, that people didn't buy to help donate to the, to the cause, they bought the rest up. You know, my friend Irvin and Dez, they went and bought the rest of the food up and went and passed it out to the homeless. Like, you know, there's a lot of programs out here as far as like, you know, quotes, nonprofits, but a lot of these nonprofits that I've ran into that have invited me to their meetings and to have a conversation with them, it comes across to me as more self-serving than being really in the community. Where these dudes that I've been functioning with from day one Utah, they're really in the community. You know, they help raise money to put kids in sport, put kids in band classes, you know, college. Whatever these kids need that their fam that they gotta, you know, that they're working hard to try to do something, but their family can't afford to put them in these different type of ventures. These guys are raising money and really putting these kids in there. And all the money that comes into this day one project, day one Utah, is self fun. That's the homie, like they pull it out of their pocket that they make from their regular job, nine to five job or their businesses and put it into the program. They're not asking nobody as far as like the state 
state level or the, or the federal government level, they're not asking them for a dime. You know, they reach out to us in the community to help, you know, with certain things. And since I've been here, it's been a pretty cool experience to see the community coming together and really supporting these guys because these guys are really putting in the work. And today I just want to share a video, a Zoom call that I had with some of the members, Dez, Solo, and a homie named Mike Uliberry that has his own organizations and stuff, but we've been trying to figure out what we can do out here as far as really have an impact on the youth in the community. But not just the youth, but people like me. You know, I'm, I'm the poster child right now as far as somebody that's been incarcerated for decades and coming home now and trying to rebuild their life. You know, I, I'm taking baby steps into doing things that I'm trying to do, but I don't have a clue. I don't know outside of the books that I've read while I was in the penitentiary about how the real world works, because I've been locked up since I was a kid. So coming back and meeting these guys and them sharing their knowledge with me and plugging me in with different industry, different people with different knowledge and information, it's, it's been a great help. You know, we, and we want to extend that, broaden that out to help others like me that's coming home, that's been gone away for decades, that don't know what's going on out here. You know, everybody needs help to get on their feet. You know, we're not like men like me. Like I said, all the time I emphasize, and I just want to make clear that I don't speak for everybody. You know, but for individuals that are trying to change their life, I'm going to speak for them because I'm one of those people that are trying to change my life. But when we come out, we don't have no knowledge. We have no job skills. We have no experience. And, you know, I've been blessed every step of the way from the day I came home. You know, one of the homies that I knew back in the days pulled up to my spot. It was like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I got a job. You want it? You got it. You know, and I can't speak enough, you know, enough on how that's helped me to really stay out here in the free world and build a function and pursue my goals and my dreams. Because at the end of the day, man, men like me, we want to know how to, how are we going to able to feed our family? If not that, how are we going to able to feed ourselves, put a roof over our head, put food on the table? And I think that's, those are the projects that I believe that we need to emphasize when it comes to the reentry program, people coming home from prison, teach them how to type some type of job skills that they can make a living off of so they don't resort back to the things that they know, which ends up back in prison, you know? But like I said, man, I'm not here to, you know, disrespect any of the other nonprofits or anything that's going on out there, but just my experience dealing with these dudes over here, these guys with the, the Day One Utah like, I'm inspired by them. They're putting in the work every day, you know. And today, you know, I was honored and privileged to be included in their Zoom call about an upcoming project that, they're, that we're trying to bring into Utah. I think it started out with a native guy up in Canada, and there's a Cambodian dude, uh, Sarom, that's out in Boston that wants to bring it over here to Utah. It's called the Peace Circle. You know, they're dealing with juveniles that are facing prison times, that have might got themselves caught up in some serious issues. But, you know, right now, you know, credit to all the people that's been pushing all that stuff, the criminal justice system, especially for the youth, is not lock them up and throw away the keys first, you know? They pivot to where late. Let's find out what's going on with these kids. Let's find out how we can help them. And let's give them an opportunity to see if they're ready to make a difference in their life, to make a change, if not for themselves, for their family. You know, and I was privy to uh, be able to watch the documentary that they put out. It's not out for the public yet, but I was 
and the stuff I saw, you know, I felt it. It was cool. And I really think that if we can find other ways to reach out to the kids, to communicate with the kids in ways that they can understand, a way they can relate, I think it would be a positive effect in their lives. And, you know, my guys right here that I'm about to show you, the little Zoom call, you know, they're really doing it. Come out here and support your community, man. Like, you don't have to know anybody over there, but if you feel the way we feel about trying to starve the system of our youth, man, come show the love because that's where it starts. And when it gets to me, it's almost too late on some cases. You know, I just, you know, for me, I just, I'm just determined not to spend another day in one of them boxes. But a lot of people that are my age that have done decades of time, they pretty much gave up. They're pretty much stuck in their ways, and they're just like, man, I don't have no job skills out here. It's just, you know, they can't deal with, you know, society because, you know, they've been, um, what is it, what's the mentality called? They've been, you know, in, 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 institutionalized and you know, I can speak, you know, when I speak on these things, it's coming from experience, and I know exactly what they're coming from. You know, but for me, like, again, I always emphasize that I'm unique in the aspect that I have a lot of support and love, you know, not just from my wife, from my family, but from my friends, from the homies, and to the extent, the community, like, everywhere I've gone, Everywhere I've been, been invited to or show up at, you know, they welcome me with open arms and it's all love. And I'm so grateful for that because, you know, that helps you. When you have a support system, when you know people are rooting for you, it helps you to keep moving forward, you know, regardless of the struggles and the hurdles that you're going to face. Having that love from your family, having that love from your homies, having that love from your community, you know, for me personally, it makes me feel like I don't want to disappoint them. So regardless of how I feel waking up in the morning, I got to put on my pants and shoes and, and get to moving my feet because now people are watching me. And I don't want their love and their support and all that ever to be in vain. You know, if I do that, then I can never sit here in front of you guys and tell you that I am the man that I'm professing to be the man that I'm striving to be. But without further ado, I'm gonna take you in to our little Zoom call and just really show you, you guys, what we're really doing out here in Utah and what we're working on, man. I hope you guys stick with it. Come and support this channel. I know it's not all crazy prison stories and stuff, but don't worry, I got plenty more. I'm just trying to pivot to a new thing, trying something new. I'm not going nowhere, so. I like your boy. I want you to be comfortable and know what you're doing and, and feel like it's something because ideally, I want to be able to get open up doors and be like, hey, we feel like so-and-so, just you're, you're the move for this. Like, I really feel, Des, like you're you're a good fit for Decker Lake. I feel like I could be a good fit for Decker Lake. So, do you yeah. want to What's that, bro? Did you do decorate? Yeah, I would, but um, when we were talking about it, you can only get a couple people in there. So I feel like you, you could make that if you feel like uh maybe Mesa and Dez is more. I, I feel like Dez too because he's experienced being yeah. locked up early. You know, yeah. uh, does that make sense? So, and then I can just be the the guy if if one of them can't make it. You know what I'm saying? So. I feel like you can take the lead on that and just, if you feel like it's worthwhile for Dez and Mesa, and then Mesa's already, he's got an experience from the, it's been a while since I've been locked up. Does that make sense? I, I, I always feel like I can come in on the, more like a, a I don't know, Dez, I just feel like Dez and Mesa have a, 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 a more experience being in locked yeah. up and having to deal with the politics of, of, of prison does that make sense i can come yeah. from a space of 
as you're out, because I've been out for a while and, you know, the, my own lane, I guess. So. Yeah. And, and here's the thing is it's it's not limited. I just, I only asked him for two. So I, ideally, because what I was sharing with Des yesterday is when when we, when we're leaving and we're walking through, let me close my window, sorry. All right, good. So when I'm um when we're leaving, we walk through and all the other kids see us and they're already asking Fred like, "Hey man, when can we chop it up with them?" You know what I'm saying? Because like yeah, like I said when and this would be one thing that I'll talk about is when we went in there, like I, mean, I had I had one of the homies merch shirts on and, and a hat and and Lecky went in 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 Dickies and you know how Lecky dressed, so they see that and they want to know why we're there, right? So. Ideally, we could we could tap in with more. I want to tap in with the kids getting out. Yeah, hey, definitely. You ain't got no support, man. Let us put some foundation under you. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe show us a little bit of show us a little bit of effort while you're there. Like be on point. Maybe do do a little bit, and then when you get out, and there's a there's potential for us even starting like a basic carpenter skills class in there. We could teach them to learn. Uh, tape measure, all that stuff, right? They're willing to give us a lot of plays. So there'll be there'll be potential for us all to get in. Um, at some point, maybe even next time. I, I don't know, but I'd love to see people to be like, oh, this is my lane. Let me move in that direction. If you feel that way, uh, you don't have to, but I just want to open, I just want to hold the doors open that I got open. But after, right. after you get through the door, I want everybody to kind of make your lane, bro. We, we, you know, what I mean, we, we, we all have our things that we do. We all have what we're good at. I believe that we all have solid intentions. That's why, like I said, I'm bringing, I'm bringing you guys on these two things. These are two things that I've been lucky to have someone invite me into. And um, so, so springboarding to to the video was to Rome. Um, He, uh, that, hey, Mike, uh, just that, real quick, did, yeah. were were you able to send out that because I I've seen it. I don't know if, if Mesa had a chance to look at the video or yeah, I watched it. Okay, I can, um, can you guys hear? Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. We can hear you. I thought just, it was a just can't see I, me. <laughs> I, I see a big old M, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <laughs> No, but uh, okay. So we're all on it. We we've all got a chance to see the video, and okay. I think he had a great story, you know. And then I can relate just because I'm I'm a person of color. So yeah. and he was an immigrant, so I yeah. could relate to yeah. him trying to acclimate. You know what I mean? So okay. And it's what we all experience, bro. Whether whether right. you're born here, whether you're a poly or or a Mexican or Asian born here, your parents still dealt with yep. us. We passed that shit on to you. We we grew up so. Here's the thing: is I talked to him really briefly yesterday, and I liked I liked I, I look for key words, bro. I look for key words in people, and one thing I noticed with him is he's like, I want us to get a people a team of people together, and feel good about it, and know that we want to move forward before we 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 go into with his with the DA and them. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's still he's still you could tell he's. He still has that that mindset. Yeah, like, yeah. These guys, these they're they're on the opposite side. Not to say that they are, but it's still the conversation is still in his head. So I could see he's right. like, I'm reluctant. I don't want to give these guys a hundred and have them run off. You know what I mean? So he wants to meet everybody. He wants more people to be to be to be honest, bro. I at that point, I would have you guys bring in people you trust because. I don't know that I have any other people that I would trust because this can be something. We can yeah. go in. This is the this is what I see is I see as an opportunity for us to go in, build relationships, network with people, continue to stay who we are, make, get the training from this program, but still be consistent with what we're doing. We ain't we ain't nobody's poster boys. We ain't running up nobody's program. If, yeah, yeah. If if the peace circle and Salt Lake County DA's office and day one and access to excellence and whatever Mesa got going, if we can collaborate, cool. But it's not, we're not running up your agenda. That's me. When I said there's some some hard, 
solid nose that I got is, and they know that about me. And I'm vocal about it. Like, I'm a street dude. I come from the streets. Those are the motherfuckers that I'm going to be able to touch. Yeah. I, I can't. I, I don't know how to. I don't know how to tell the the, the the drug addict how to not be a drug addict. I don't know that, bro. So okay, for me, I don't know, let them know. authenticity for me is 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 a very um, important. Yeah. That's why I like the work that everybody's doing because I feel that like everybody's. Um, but we okay. we really have a lane, bro. This dude got something good. He seems pretty cool. Um, the fact that we've been through it, bro, and that's our leverage. And I, I, I want everybody to kind of understand that our leverage is you can come up with the dopest program in the world. But if those kids or those people coming out of prison don't see people who look and talk and experience the shit that they did, it ain't going to hit the same. Your success rate might be one out of 20. Right. We might pull three out of 20. We could we could give you three X on, on whatever it is, right? And probably mm -hmm. higher if we all see that our plate, we all have different. I can't, I mean, I I don't, we all have different experience. We all made our own lanes when we got out, right? Right. That's the thing. And we all having that diversity of what it took for us to get there, get here, is it, really important. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh Mike, uh going back to what you're saying about having that team, and uh when we first started day one. It, it was about 15 to 20 of us. So as we got going, um, a lot of them didn't see eye to eye with us because of, of how we was pushing. And the saying goes, not everybody can go. Yeah. So the, our circle got smaller, which, which we knew was going to happen. And it's sad because these are people we ran the streets with for many years, but um, obviously, uh, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of the things that we have moved forward with, uh, they don't agree with because they're still stuck in the mind frame of our people. And I told Solo, me and Solo just had this very conversation on the way back from Denver just over the weekend that my people, uh, the environment I grew up in, when I walked out of my house, my neighbors were black, Mexicans, Asians, and different. I'm talking about Filipinos to... Um, Laos to Thai to Cambodian, um, even we have we had Hmong over there. Those were my neighbors, and some of some of the homies were. And and you know we still hear it now. You know we, we need to focus on our people. Not so solo, man. My people is people of color, man, and and it's from different backgrounds. Just 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 that upbringing, that lifestyle. Those are my peoples, and I didn't want to box ourselves in and 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 shrink the the you know, how far we can reach uh, with the movement we was, uh, just the mindset we was on. So, yeah, our, our, our group got smaller, and I think uh, the team we got now with the smaller group is um, that ride with us are on the same mindset. And the other one slowly, uh, just as time went on, has reached back out to us. I think uh, a lot of them starting to see what we was what we're doing and they're starting to see the bigger picture. Let's put it that way. They're starting to see the bigger picture of man. It's, it's not just our, you know, like Samoans, you know, that uh, let's, let's be real. They're just like, we should stick to, you know, the Samoans. I'm like, nah, not me, dog. I, I, I fuck with way too many people, especially what we've gone through. You Mesa solo myself in the prison system. We fuck with all races, man. And, and, um, in order for us to 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 make it in society to, today, man, especially with uh, um, just with all the politics, man, we we gotta be open to to all, you know. And that's just my thoughts on it, man. But anyways, uh, I just wanted to point out that the, we did have a big circle, but it shrunk because of that. Well, that's we good. Weeded, we weeded out the ones that that didn't fit what we was pushing. Yeah, and um, and yeah, Mike. Uh, just to go back on you, say you wanted more people. I think we're we should be very selective, and mm -hmm. we should have folks who have experienced that life. And and we know a few. Just you know, uh, we've got the homies. I'm I, I don't want to speak for them, but I know that guys like G Stone, who's 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 oh yeah, who's locked up, uh, with Dez. He's he's experienced. I love to tap into him because he's a very knowledgeable dude. You've got Paul Ama's brothers. 
uh, who you know Cobra, who's who's with the Bold Movement, and his other brother Rock, they just got out after doing. There's 50, 60 years of incarceration between those two, and they could, you know, they could really relate to to what we're doing. So when you say building a team, I say we we do nothing but we we tap in the yeah. the yeah. folks who have exclusive uh, who who know exactly what it takes to change and. You know, they can come from a place of like, you know, so they can help the young kids, you know, foster different fucking outlooks on problem solving, I guess. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I, I, like I said, I put a trust in you guys because I, I see how everybody moves. And I, I know you guys are protective of what you guys are doing. So you just ain't going to be. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, let's, let's for, for sure, let's be selective because here's the thing is. They're going to look at our consistency, too, just like them kids are, right? And consistency is the one thing, right, that's going to it's gonna separate it, right? So um, uh, one thing I would say is, so how when I get in front of them, I kind of, this is kind of my display is I was like, here's what we have. This is me. This is the assets I have. This is my skill set. This is Solo. This is Dez. This is Mesa. And I want you guys to know that, right? Because yeah. I'm going to say, where we're at this is what we have this is what we need this is the step to get us there so okay we have this you know for us to get to do what we do we need we need structure right that's what we need structure mm -hmm. processes how shit works you know what i mean and what steps do we got to get there and and how we can leverage that for what they're doing but i want us to soak up game watch how this program is run watch how it's developed watch how he got connected with the da because if we ever need to make that play, then we got the tools. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I love him and what he's doing, and I would love to help him as, as far as it aligns with what we're doing. Right. Has to align. As soon as it doesn't align, then we just have to explain to him, like, hey, you know, this. It, but I feel like it's a pretty solid. He, they're really just trying to do a training to see, you know. Um but yeah, man, I be, let's be selective because here's the thing is we got an opportunity to be in and, and be in rooms that we, we I would have never expected to be in a room with fucking Sim Gill. I was like, right. you, know, you know what I said when I first started with him, I was like, there's like, you know, and I was like, yeah, I know Sim. I know Sim, he prosecuted me 10 years ago. And I, told him, <laughs> and I told him. And I was like, but I'm here. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy, I'm man. Yeah. I'll, I'll lead. You'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll lead. I lead with I've been in prison. I, I lead with it because that's the power, bro. Because the thing is, is when they call you into a room, they're calling you based on what they know of you now. And then you hit them with that. And that's like, oh, shit, you? you? Yeah, I like, right. I was like, I've been 14 years as an adult and about another three to four to five as a kid. And they're like, no way. And I was like, yeah, way. Yeah, so that's the power punch where it that's what gives you that that's that whatever like that that certified you know what I mean Let's yeah because they see what you guys are doing and stuff but um I'm a, I'm a rambler so you know I mean I want to give everybody else Mesa for sure I want you to talk a little bit solo a little bit more but any questions uh that you guys have I mean I'm welcome to you know we need to talk one on one or we just if they're here, if you think about them later, whatever. But I would also like to present an opportunity. So there's a thing called a peer support specialist in Utah. Yeah. yeah. It's it's okay. It's the training's just it's kind of it's whatever, but it gives you a certification through Doppel to act as a counselor and use your lived experience. It's called a lived experience training. A therapist we, can't do that. Nobody can do that. Except we we. Yeah, just so you know, we're we're scheduled to get on a new on a peer support from the next class is from uh, February fifth to the ninth, and me and Dan's are supposed we're gonna try and, and get that in because it's a it's a on site it's not a Zoom deal it's not an yeah. online deal so it's, we've got to figure that out but we've got we we need two two people to sign us off so Shannon from Journey of Hope is gonna do that and Nisi's gonna sign us off and then we'll be able to get that you know. I can say you signed so yeah, you oh, could. You can Mike, give us Mike that. said he could sign off on it too, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, here's, so that's good. Here's so, a play with that. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. 
No, you good. You good. Here's the play with the CPSS. Okay, so the CPSS allows me to do what I'm doing. Pull some homies in the Decker Lake. We talk about being in the hood, banging, going to prison. Nobody else can do that. It's unique. I've learned to leverage it. But here's the play. There's one in Yale. Yale developed a lived experience training. And I've been yep. partnered with them. And it's the best lived experience training. I've been um I've been I've been talking with them to try to bring it here. And I can do it. I just need the participants. But what I want to do is what I told them I would like to do is I would like to add um, a piece for long-term incarceration and violent offenders. I want to be able to, to, and what it does is, all it does is it tells you how to take your lived experience and use it. It just gives you the tools. A lot of the training a therapist gets, that's the training we get. But it shows us, how, teaches us how to leverage our lived experience. So the CPS says here, that gives you certification to do what you want in the state. They haven't regulated it, and as long as we don't push them, that's fine because it's mainly, there's only probably four or five people with violent histories on either CPSS. It's mostly mental health and substance abuse. But it gives you that thing. So if we don't ruffle no feathers and get this Yale training, bro, it sets it off. Yeah. Really, it gives us the tools because here's the thing, if we're able to get in there, the, you know I mean, the, the, we have the passion and the drive. We're going to make some stuff happen. But if we get some tools behind it, you know, some tools that teach us how to be a leader, how to, to do these things, those are the things that I feel can be assets to us. So, you know, because the thing is, if I'm going to be in there trying to make an impact, I want to have as many tools I can to make the best impact that I can. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, so back to that, uh, th that that's also on the uh, that information is also on the Doppel website, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because I remember seeing it um, on there when I was researching the the CPSS uh, about a month or two ago, seeing when the next class was, and that's what it pulled up was Doppel website. One of uh, one of them was the Doppel website. So what is Doppel? Uh, Department of Professional Licensing. When when you start a business it, it provides a lot of different information but you can go on there as well when you start your business and uh it'll tell you about you know the class information as far as um you know what steps you need to follow or what what website or who you need to sign up with they're, but they're, they provide a lot more information on there as well though it's uh so anybody who has a professional license a contractor uh, an attorney a therapist you have to get a you have to get a license through the state, and that's Doppel. Yeah. So, so that's the cool thing about it is it gives you a Doppel certification, so you're certified in the state. And it's to be honest with you, there's some cool tools there, but it is really based around mental health, which yeah. is good because I mean, if I would have had the same understanding I had of the mental health issues I struggle with, it would have been probably more helpful. So it might even be more helpful to you guys now. I just wasn't in that. I didn't have the, the knowledge or I wasn't very versed on like mental health stuff back when I took it, but yeah. But anyways, Mesa, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I just got a question <clears throat> on the experience living that you guys were just talking about. That's like um, a job. Like when you get certified, it's like you, you can open up an office and do that. Or what, what is that? If you want, if you want, I know a guy who does it. So the state, you could even actually, Get uh, get approved and Medicaid will pay you fifty dollars per half hour. Really? Of peer support. If you want to go that way, yeah. I I just kind of used it more to leverage, um, to leverage to get me into spaces. But yeah, man, if you want, you can set up a you can set it up. Yeah. Well, just yeah, a lot of. Go ahead, go ahead, Mesa. No, I was just gonna touch back on like what what Des was saying, like as far as like. You know how you guys had a big group when you guys started out, and now it's dwindled down. Like you know, I'm with Dez on the on his the way he thinks because you know we coming out here trying to be part of the community, trying to raise the community up. Well, the community evolves every ethnic, you know, every race, yeah. every culture, every group. Because you know, if you're just focusing on one group, let's just say for example the Samoans, 
and you still got all the other Mexicans, blacks, and stuff are still out doing whatever they're doing. It's you know whatever, whatever they're doing is going to affect our community. If those yeah. kids aren't being reached out to, then they're going to run into Samoan kids and push up on them. And even if the Samoan kids are in our program, they're going to want to you know like defend themselves, stand up for you. And you're you're always keeping a separation, right? Like, you know, like politics, they like to always put us in a box. This is the Latino. This is the black. This is Asian, like, you know, if you really want to be part of the community, then, you know, even, like, even the white kids, like, all these kids that are out there doing whatever they're doing, they need to be able to hear something from dudes like us that has been through it and know that this this shit is for the birds, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. Go ahead, go ahead. I, 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 I'm, I'm already, I mean, you guys know through my page, I'm all about just our people. Cause I guess I grew up in Rose Park and we, and then I, you know what I mean? And I grew up, yeah. we grew up around everybody, bro. Yeah. And I was always locked up. Like how I tap in with all the polys and like the OP, like me and a, me and a fucking went through everything together. Me and this motherfucker <laughs> went time in, in group homes and shit. Like, you know, so I, I always grew up like around everybody. So I'm all I'm all about it. Like I want to. You know I mean, I'm trying to make it. Here's the thing, man. When it comes to this kind of work, I ain't got no shit. Even if there's some some young, young little white kid bro that need to jump on, I ain't gonna push that motherfucker off. That'd be that'd be kind of some some funny shit on my end. I think if he if we can help him, I ain't. I, man, I'm 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 all about like that's the thing that I love about having. So we got we got two Samoan, we got a Mexican, we got I'm I'm Mexican and, and Jamaican, we got an Asian homie. Like the more different, because yeah, it's cool if they see us. But what happens if one of the one of the Asian kids sees the Asian homie pull up? Yeah. What if, what happens when one of the Samoan kids sees sees one of the Usos pull up? It hits. Right. It hits different. It might. I might have an eighty percent. I might have an eighty percent impact. But you have that hundred, bro. That it's important for us to have all that. Yeah, yeah man, you know, representation is everything to a young man, a young person, bro. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, because we always come from the perspective, like, how do you know what I'm going through? You ain't never exactly. lived the life that yep. I live or know the culture that I, I grew up in. And so when they yeah. see us, you know, represent for them, then they know, okay, you know, maybe there's a way for me to, you know, be a part of this. Or there's a way for me to, you know, take up some game because these guys are doing it. And like you know, we're going back to like the programs that <clears throat> the state always try to have. They've always in the, their history, they've always tried to put up dudes that that fit their criteria because they want a certain type of dude. But these dudes, when they come and speak to the kids, the kids look at them and they're like, "Man, you're a buster! Like, what the fuck you got to say to me?" You know, what right. I mean? yeah. and they're not, and they're and they're having a hard time understanding that as far as the state because you know, they look at your, your our record or whatever and like I've been invited to a couple of schools to go speak but the administration just can't get over my my record, my history. But I yeah. feel like I'm the one that can go up there and say because there's no there's no smear on my character as far as the lane that we was living in. You want somebody right. up there that oh I found God or I changed my life. But then when you look into their history, they sent 20 of their homies up state. You know what I mean? Right. And, you know, they found God in jail after they told on everybody. The facts, bro. Yeah. yeah. And when that shit comes out, the kid's like, man, you's a buster. Like, what the fuck I got to say to you? Like, all yeah. of us here, we did our time. We did everything we were supposed to. And we grew and evolved. And we realized, like, man, I don't want my kids to go through this. You know what I mean? I don't want my kids to have to live the life that I've lived have to experience the hurt and learn the hard lessons that I've learned. But right. Yeah. So why do we want somebody else to experience that? Yeah. Yeah. We want we want real men doing the real work. We don't we want to be able to give examples to kids on how to stand firm, you know, and, and uh, go through it, but you don't have to sacrifice your ethics. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, you don't have to compromise yourself. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. In a different direction, like for real. Yeah. If you really love your homies, why are you yep. gonna put yourself in a predicament where all you guys can get yep. locked up 
I'm gonna have to yep. which one of you guys gonna tell on each other. Yeah. You know, if it's really if it's real love, like out here, like I felt real love from you guys. You guys, you know, you guys are my example. You guys are my inspiration. Like on my show, that's that you guys are doing what you're doing, but you guys haven't compromised your integrity. You say, yeah, we about like if it gotta be, if it gotta go there, we can go there. But right. You know, I mean, this yeah. is what we're doing. If you ain't feeling what we're doing, let's keep pushing. Cause yeah. You know, we really believe in this shit, and we really. We know the pain that we already been through. We know all the suffering, all the heartache with our family and all that stuff. And we really ain't trying to keep continuing to spread that shit with the community. Right. You know, we're not in your yeah, if you, Yeah, and if you can tell a kid to walk away, then they don't have to worry about being a rat. Does that make yeah. sense? You try to keep them from a boy. You know, we can't help those who are in that life and who ain't trying to hear it. But we can reach those kids who are in that space of like, man, I, I don't know what to do. You, and we just try and tell them, hey, bro, let's just don't put yourself or your homies in a space or in a predicament where you feel like you got to, you know, uh, uh, you're going to end up regretting it. So just try and avoid it at all costs. And we can we can come from our lived experience and say, hey, bro, if you do this, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. And then, you know what I'm saying? And you, you can say, hey, what I didn't do was... I didn't walk away. You can be the first one to walk away and tell your homies, "Hey, fuck these dudes. Let's let's move. Let's move in this direction." Because you know, once once you get, once all of y'all do a robbery, if it's for y'all, now you're worried about. You know what I'm saying? You don't mm-hmm. want to put. You just don't want to. I want to. I want to show kids that you can walk away and still be a G. You know what I mean? So here's a. Here, here's one thing. So I, I've been, I've been kind of been able to lucky to work with some of these kids, and I, I watch how they interact with me, bro. One thing is right representation. They see you. They see people that look at. Like, but the other thing is when they know you, you're still tapped into the streets, and you tell them it's okay to yeah. not do this. They're like, damn, the big homie, big. Yeah. Big, Homie told me I don't have to be a clown. Yeah, right. Got to be on no goofy shit. Yeah, I can get on my bag when I get out of here. When you give them that permission, bro. Yeah. You give them that. It, it changes the fucking yeah. game, bro. Yeah. yeah. They're like, damn. This the homie, homie. Like, you know what I mean? Especially yeah. be like, yeah, I left it. I left that shit with my record clean. Right. Yeah. And be like, and and you're like, damn, like, damn. That's the homie from OP. He just said it was cool to, to get my, my head right, get the uh, my, my my shit. You know, this the these the homies, you know what I mean? From here, like they, they said it's cool to, to 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 get my books up, you know what I mean, to go to school while I'm there. When you give them permission, bro, because only thing anybody's ever told them, just like us, was be like, I didn't have nobody to look up to. My brother and them was in prison. All my like they didn't have nobody to look up to. We could change that, bro. It could be huge, man. It could be huge, bro. So I know we have about five minutes left. Yeah, that's the thing. They want to hear from real dudes that's been there that ain't bust out, that ain't done none of that goofy stuff. But, you know, like like you said, you didn't have any, but like the older generation did us a disservice. Yeah. Right. Because they came home and they, were, and, they were, and they continued to promote that, that goofy shit. And us being youngster, being wanting to be accepted, being wanting to be down, we thought that this was the way to go. You know what I mean? But like, we know better. You know, we've already been there. We know better. So it's time for us to just like, listen, we ain't telling you to be a buster. We ain't telling you to you know, compromise your integrity and who you are, not be down for your hood or whatever. But if you really want to be down for your hood, understand like, there's a better way to do this. Because the way you guys are going, y'all going to end up in two places. You're either going to end up in that box without gun towers around it, or you're going to end up in the one that's six feet under. Like, there's no that's other alternative. That's, you know, I learned it the hard way. When I heard people say that shit, I was like, yeah, whatever, whatever. But that's the truth. But there's, yeah. no, there's no, there's no gold at the part of this, there's no part of gold at this end of this rainbow over here. You know? But at the same time, when we're telling them to pivot, we have to provide them a space for them to pivot too. Because they're going to run around with that energy. And yeah. you can't just say, hey, don't do this, don't do this. But they're like, well, 
what am I supposed to do? You know what I mean? That's right. what you guys come from. You guys got businesses and shit that you guys can show them. Like me, I'm them. I'm just, I'm learning. I'm just, I'm watching you guys and I'm like, okay, I could do something else like what you guys are doing. But, you know, like, I can speak on the experience that I've had as far as the last two decades or whatever, but when it comes to pivoting and changing your life, like, you guys are the example. But I think you got the power in your story lies, like, your mindset, bro. When, when did your mindset shift? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because since you've been out, since I've been running into you, you've been on, you've been on some positive shit. So at what point did your mindset shift? Because, like, I did 14 years, but it was in three installments. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't do the stuff like you did. What, at what time did your mindset change, and what did you have to do what did you have to tell the homies when you're like, hey, man, I'm done? Or whatever you did. I don't know what the situation was, but whenever you made that shift, like, how, what was the play? What, what, did, what were the thoughts in your head? You know what I mean? Well, like, um, I mean, I made the shift, like, when I started realizing that I had a chance to come home, right? Mm -hmm. when, you know, I'm doing 26 years, and my mentality at the time is, I'm never going to come out. I'm going to catch a body. I've, I almost caught two, you know, by the grace of God that, you know, they survive or whatever. But I never had the mentality. I never had the, I never thought that it was going to be possible for me to come back home. And then yeah. when, you know, I started getting down to like four or five years, I started thinking about it. And then I realized like, you know, really, I, got, I credit all to my wife. You know, her loyalty, her love that stayed down for all these years. I'm just like, you know, when you find something that you love more than yourself and you get to a point where you don't want to continue to disappoint the people that has been there for you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, you know, as far as, like, leaving the street, there's nothing the street can ask any more of me. You know, right. There's, there's nothing. I get dudes out here, like, I'm not saying it to be disrespectful or whatever, but a lot of them can't tie my shoelaces. And so... Whatever I wanted to do, there was no way. I've never allowed anybody to dictate how I did my time or how I lived my life anyway. But, you know, they, however they felt about it, they, they were going to have to accept it. You know, because, like I said, I found something that I love more than them. And for me, like, really, I'm not even living for myself right now. I'm really living trying to just show my family and my wife that all the time that they, you know, all the tears that they shed, all the times they were there for me wasn't in vain. And, yeah. you know, I struggle with it sometimes, but that's my motivation, you know, is living for the people that love me. Hey, we have to, we have to jump off, man. I don't mean to cut you off, Mason, but we got like good, a man. Man. Good. So, but, Yeah, man. Thanks to everybody, man. If you need to reach out or whatever, or, you know, maybe we keep it the group chat or the group text going and yeah, and he, man, just tap in, bro. Anyway, I can support you guys. You already know. I could pull up, you know, whatever. If there's anything I could do, man, let me know. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I, that's a good diet. We, we, that's a good idea. We need to keep it going. Yeah. This uh, team's one. Yeah, I'm following yeah. the lead, man. Whatever you guys need, I'm going to make myself available. My, my schedule is very fluid. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. I'm in there. Whatever you All need, right. man, I'm there. So, All right, y'all. Uh, right. All right, fellas. Much love. Right. Right. Much love, man. Thank uh, you for including me, man. Yeah, for sure, man. I love. Goodbye.